Hi, I'm Michelle Pilly, the Managing Director and Publisher of Hay House UK. Today I'm sitting with Dr. David Hamilton, the wonderful author and scientist, who's going to be speaking about the phenomenal HEAL project that he's been involved in. Welcome, David. Uh, thank you, it's always a pleasure <laughs> nice to have a chat with you. I love being here in the Hay House offices. Yeah. Well, always, always good to speak with you, and I was very excited to see you appear in the Heal, the film, and the project that's come out of Heal. Yeah. Um, do you know what the original kind of ideas and concepts were behind putting that together? Yeah, I think they wanted to, you know, popularise the idea that you know your mind and emotions and lifestyle can exert quite a phenomenal effect uh, on your health. I think because we're we're so used to. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sick, I just I, p I pop a pill. Not that anything's wrong with that at all, but in addition, there's other things we can do, like the frame of mind, how you feel, what you're thinking about, you know, lifestyle, food to eat, and so I think they wanted to bring more attention to the fact that there's more things that we can do uh, to, to help the healing process, in addition to uh, what we would normally do in the mainstream. Not, in, not instead of, but in addition to. No, absolutely, to, yeah, to complement that. Yeah, yeah. And so, obviously, I imagine the researchers were familiar with your work, they'd come across your books. Yeah. But what was there anything in particular that attracted them to bringing you into this project? Yeah, I think in particular, I had formerly worked as a scientist in one of the world's largest pharmaceutical companies. So I, I was a chemist, an organic chemist. Right. Nothing to do with organic food. <laughs> it's like Lego, but instead of using bricks to make shapes, you use atoms to make shapes, and they'd become your drugs. So I worked in the pharmaceutical industry and I was working on developing drugs for cardiovascular disease and cancer. Uh, and then I started studying the placebo effect. And I think that, that attracted, uh, they found that attractive in me because it, I come from the drug side and it wasn't that I'm saying drugs are wrong, I'm saying that if you can do this, but do, there's other things you can do as well. And I think that perspective was quite unique for them. And so I think that's why they wanted to chat with me initially. Yeah. And you found that the placebo effect was an extraordinary factor oh. in healing, and it actually had a, a played a big part in you leaving the, the pharmaceutical industry. Yeah, well, actually, because I, I worked, my, my job in the industry was quite broad. Right. Uh, not just a chemist, but very broad-ranging job. Uh, and so, when you start to see, you know, loads of people. I mean, for example, let's say. Uh, to prove that a drug works, you've got to give some people a drug and some people a placebo. So let's say uh, 100 people get the drug and 75 improve, then it's not uncommon to have you know, 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 even improving uh, on the drug. And I found that phenomenal. And I thought, why do people not know about this? Yeah. And, and surely if we understood this, maybe there's ways that we can harness that. Th there must be a, a mechanism in the body that allows a state of mind or consciousness or feeling to exert a physical effect. So when I worked in the, the job, I became fascinated with understanding how does that work? And then could the ordinary person learn specific little ways of thinking or imagining that could tap into that effect and therefore f help the healing process? And that's something you spent years studying Absolutely. since then. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. 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 And is that research developing or expanding from beyond that? Oh, it, it absolutely is. I mean, when I worked in the pharmaceutical industry, I remember talking to some of my colleagues. I, I'd talk about the placebo effect, and they would say, oh, it's just the placebo effect. <laughs> and it was dismissed as a, yeah. a figment of your imagination. Now we absolutely know that when you believe something, yeah. it causes a physical change in your brain. actually alters your biochemistry and your circuitry of the brain if you keep believing that. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and nowadays we know that if you visualise even your immune system, you actually enhance your immune If you visualise your immune cells actually, you know, destroying a cancer cell, for yeah. example, that can actually and stimulate, uh, increase the efficiency of your immune system. So this is all research that's really yeah, come so out. Yes, there's, there's very strong science to oh, back that up now. Very, so. very strong. Some of the, the studies are randomised controlled trials. Right. Now it's become, you know, it's gone from its infancy, yes. the mind-body connection research in its infancy, now to a really properly developed science. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you're bringing that through in uh, a new edition of your of your best-selling book, How the Mind Can Heal the Body. As yeah, well. absolutely. So, yeah. so it's going to be very exciting. Yeah, yeah. In terms of the the group of experts that they pulled together to actually create the Heal project, why do you think they chose the kinds of people they chose? What about the combination? I, I think that they, it seemed to me that they were 
choosing people with scientific experience, right. not just scientific credentials, but scientific experience uh, as well, who understood enough about the not only the mainstream but the holistic side. Because I, I, I think you know it, it's important that we don't just say this is how this is how medicine should be done or this is how it should be done, but people who are embracing a broader perspective. And I thought that was really that was some, an intelligent thing for the producers to do, is get people who are firmly in a mainstream but very open to alternatives as well. And so I thought that was a really great thing to do because then you could see mainstream doctors, for yes. example, or mainstream researchers saying this is great stuff and you hear extra things that you can do with the way that you imagine things or the changing your diet or something. Uh, and I thought that was great. Yeah. You know, really great. It's a wonderful lineup of people presenting mm. in the project. Were any of the, the experts, did any of them surprise you or did they, any of them particularly impress you? It, a lot of them actually. Yeah. Um, it, Kelly Turner, I remember, I, I met her briefly. Yeah. She was finishing her interview, so I got to see the end of of radical remission. Right. I wasn't really familiar, to be honest, yeah. with the work, and I thought, isn't it amazing to have gathered together lots of people who have had, you know, radical remissions yeah. from cancer, serious yeah. illness, and and charting what is it they were doing, yeah. and was it is there a pattern in what they were doing, yeah. and how that 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 was affecting the outcome. And I thought that was amazing. I was captivated listening to the end of this interview. Yeah. I was kind of lucky actually to turn up at the studio just as she was on. <laughs> so that for me was, that was, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, no, fantastic. And if you were envisaging what you think that all the people coming into this project, listening to it and taking the ideas on board, what would you want them to take away from the whole Heal project? That a the, our minds and our lifestyles can exert a far greater effect on our health than I think we're ordinarily led to believe. And I don't mean led to believe in that people are making us believe anything in particular, but just through culture, we kind of learn that when I'm sick, I better pop this pill. And again, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But if we understand, there are other things we can do as well. Like for example, a, you know, Stress plays a big role in a lot of medical conditions, yeah. but how many people understand that there's many ways that we can combat the physiological effects of stress? Right. I mean, one for example, you be kind to someone. It's yeah. physiologically the opposite of stress. Yeah. It's not, you know, people think what's the opposite of stress? It's peace or it's calm. That's the absence of stress. The opposite physiologically is the feelings that you get from being kind. Yeah. And that actually has a physical effect on your arteries, on your immune system. Yeah because that feeling generates hormones inside your, your body. And I think when people understand these extra little things and think, well, I didn't know that, yeah. then maybe I could do some mindfulness meditation. That's a, a stress balancing thing. And maybe if I do these visualization techniques, visualizing my immune system working as I'm going through, say, chemotherapy, yeah. and not knowing that that can actually have a beneficial effect. So I think when people, the average person learns these kind of extra things. If I made a radical change to my diet, for example, my attitude, we understanding how all of these things can have a beneficial effect. I think that's when a film like Heal really comes into its own, when it educates people. It doesn't say this is wrong, it just says this plus this might actually be better than this alone, kind of thing. And I think that's when it's really, I think that's when Heal flexes its muscles, so to speak. Brilliant. Thank you, David, for taking time to talk to us about that. Well, it's a fabulous project. We really hope that it's going to get out to many, many people out there. Thank you. My pleasure.